Broadcasting live from somewhere underneath the ground. Archaeology News, the news you can trust. Now buckle up, because this is going to be one of the weirdest and wackiest collections of archaeology news you've ever heard. Well, I got a great show for you today with some wonderful weird stuff. Yeah, it's been a busy month, but please feel free to let me know via the comments if you agree or if you think I missed any story that you know of. Now, this first story is pretty apropos considering we just did a whole segment about zombies. But someone has just taken notice that there are thousands of human brains that have been found all over the world over the last hundreds of years in a miraculous state of preservation. And that's pretty weird because the human brain is fragile. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Being part of the body's soft tissue, brains are among the first things to decompose. And considering how acidic the soil is in certain places, we're sometimes lucky to even find skeletons. Well, as it turns out, there have been exactly 4,405 confirmed findings of brains from 213 sites around the world in every single continent except Antarctica, for obvious reasons. Freaking freezing in here, Mr. Bigglesworth. Now, this has been going on a long time. In fact, the first human brain in the sample was found in the 1600s, and the oldest is reported to be over 12,000 years old. Now, obviously being so old, most of these brains are discolored and shrunken after so much time in the ground. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, stop it! Hey, you're messing up here! Come on! Whoa! Whoa! Stop it! Whoa! Now, as to how this actually happened, the team of researchers proposed five separate mechanisms depending on the environment where the brains were found. So first, some of them were dried. And not surprisingly, we find a big concentration of these in Egypt with its desert and, of course, all those mummified human remains. And that right there is the great pharaoh Ramses II, who died more than 3,000 years ago, supposedly at age around 90 years old. Now, second, there are those that have been preserved in incredibly cold and dry places, like all the way up in the Andes Mountains, where lots of human remains have been found in an amazing state of preservation. Now, this here is a little bit morbid, but this girl is the victim of human sacrifice. She's more than 500 years old. There's also a big concentration in Europe. Now, this is certainly partially due to sampling bias because, as we know, Europe is much more densely populated and subject to much more intense exploration than the rest of the world. However, it's definitely also partially due to those bog bodies that we've talked so much about. Now, remember, those are bodies that have been preserved in bogs or marshes. Dead marshes. Yes, yes, that is the name. And this would be the third of the mechanisms the team described for how these brains were preserved. And that's sort of like a natural tanning process that these bodies undergo. Now, tanning is the uh, process for making leather. And we're not going to talk much more about that because if you've ever seen uh, tanning, it's a pretty off-putting and a pretty smelly process. So there's a few other mechanisms they propose. There's a lot they still don't know. But anyway, why is all of this so important? Well, first, these brains can actually give us really crucial information about human evolution. Remember, the oldest are more than 12,000 years old, and that's a lot of time for human evolution. We can sequence their DNA and see some of the changes in the human brain and how they evolved over time. Also, we can actually help out modern medicine by studying neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia. If you remember, we've covered some stories where ancient bodies, DNA, etc., has taught us about the origins of the Black Death in what today is Kyrgyzstan. Or even remember they studied the origins of multiple sclerosis among those uh, migrating Yamnaya people 
from Central Asia into Europe. However, because the brain tissue tends to get discolored over time, it often actually would take on the color of the surrounding soil, and therefore much of it has probably been overlooked and gets tossed out on these archaeological digs. So I'll remember on my next dig to pay special attention and be on the lookout for any brain tissue hanging out in the soil. Okay, so do you remember our extended discussion about the Mycenaean culture in Bronze Age Greece? Well, if you recall, this was a very martial culture, apparently, as there's tons of imagery of fighting and weaponry and warfare. And in fact, something that a lot of people know from Mycenaean culture without realizing it is the Trojan War. And that comes from Homer's Iliad, that epic poem talking about a lot of these events. Now that poem, before Homer wrote it down, was an oral poem, so it's a mishmash of lots of different stories. But the fact that Homer describes these very strange boar's tusk helmets, and then a couple of them were found archaeologically, that proves that there's at least a kernel of truth behind the story. Anyway, way back in 1960, near the village of Dendra in southern Greece, this bizarre suit of armor was discovered. Now, if you looked at the map, that's actually right near Naphplion and the site of ancient Mycenae, where we did do that site visit way back when. Well, yeah, that suit of armor looks pretty non-functional and overall just cray-cray, right? And the thing is, other than those greaves, those are the leg guards, and of course that boar's tusk helmet, Nothing like this suit of armor has ever been seen before. And I mean, after all, how do you even move in that thing? Yes, you can go to the toilet. One of the things that's a little awkward though is, is all of this area here. So if you want to go to the toilet, you have to just sort of hoitch this up. Well, more than 60 years after its discovery, a group of archeologists wanted to answer that question and they therefore conducted one of the most insane bits of experimental archaeology that I have ever seen. So what they did is they recreated uh, that bronze suit of armor, and this of course was the Bronze Age, so that's what it was made out of, and they selected 13 Marines from Greece's current day uh, military, and they selected them making sure their stature and build was similar to those skeletons that were found in Grave Circle B at Mycenae, the site we visited, and those would have been elite graves of warriors. And those 13 Marines received training from actual martial arts masters. Wax on, wax off, breathe in, breathe out. And experts in Japanese fencing. And using Homer's descriptions, they actually ate whatever it is that people ate back in Mycenaean days. Look at this. Hey! You call it flop? Real slop has got chunks of things in it. This is more like gruel. And now this is the craziest part. Based on descriptions of battles by Homer and some of the writings of Strabo, the researchers actually created an 11 hour simulation of fighting activities that would have occurred that those 13 Marines had to do wearing the armor. And the kicker was, because it seems like the Battle of Troy took place during the summer, this had to be done in the heat. And using various scientific calculations, they figured out what the temperatures would have been, and that's what these Marines had to do. Now, obviously, it was really tough, but these Marine dudes could handle it. And as they were doing this simulation, various... Uh, sensors were measuring their body temperature, their heart rate, and other vitals to see how they were doing. And that data was fed into a computer program on the back end that simulated if this could actually be done uh, in various temperatures and conditions. And actually, in most of those simulations, Marines, these guys like this, could have done uh, these simulation without keeling over and dying in that armor, which is pretty interesting because supposedly when you study uh, armor later in the medieval times, one of the biggest killers of those knights would have been exhaustion from carrying around that heavy armor. 
So like so many other things, maybe the people uh, longer back ago, maybe they knew, knew something that we didn't at this point. And now we're off to northwest Saudi Arabia, where archaeologists have done some excavations in a series of lava tunnel caves called Um Jersan. And they confirmed that humans have been spending a lot of time down there going back to the Neolithic era, which is 6,000 years ago. Now this was done, of course, with radiocarbon dating of human remains found down there. And they also found more modern human remains dating back to the 1800s. Now, what were archaeologists doing down in these caves in the first place? Well, it's long been known that Saudi Arabia was not always a vast desert. In fact, it used to be green and lush, and it became a place that people would herd animals, even as it dried out a bit. Now, as you probably know, Saudi Arabia has opened up quite a bit in uh, the last few decades to researchers and even to tourists. And although, of course, the dry desert climate is great for preserving stuff, stone tools do very well, but believe it or not, human bones and organics don't do quite as well. And that's because even though it's dry, there's also plenty of wind erosion, and the extreme changes in temperature from hot to cold also damage organic remains. So archaeologists in 2019 had the idea of looking down in the caves because stuff would be better sheltered there. Now, not only did the archaeologists find human and animal remains, but they also found 16 panels of cave art depicting scenes of humans and animals. And based on the style of how those looked and the varnish that was put on the surface of them, maybe for coloring or preservation, the archaeologists estimate uh, these images to be between 5,500 and 6,500 years old. However, just because this was the Stone Age, remember Neolithic means new and stone, doesn't mean that the people who did this were cavemen or anything. Uh if you remember way back to our first site visit to Cosque Mediterrane, people way back when did spend a lot of time in caves doing certain things, like perhaps ritual activities, um, that's why there may be so many paintings there, or taking temporary shelter, but they didn't necessarily live in the caves. And in this case, it was probably to escape the heat because, as you may know, the desert does get hot. Because we're in the middle of a desert, and we aren't going to get very far once that blazing sun gets overhead. Nice dissolve. But again, it's doubtful they would have lived down there full time, maybe just in between moving place to place with their animals because having visited lava caves like this in Djibouti, I can tell you that wouldn't be very comfortable. Okay, and finally, one last quick thing. Going way back to our first edition of Archaeology News, do you remember that shipwreck to end all shipwrecks? The San Jose in Colombian waters with an estimated treasure haul of up to $20 billion? Well, that much money is enough to get anyone excited. So, of course, there's tons of legal action going on as Colombia, Spain, the Cara Cara indigenous people of Bolivia, and even an American salvage company are all vying to get in on the loot. Well, it's in Colombia's water, so they have kind of practical first dibs and perhaps the most legal rights, although the court will determine that. And of course, they're saying it's all about heritage and preservation and learning. But again, with that much gold under the water, clearly that's what's animating all the interest. It's fine, escape us. It's fine, escape us. Well, Colombia has announced that it has begun. Although the exact site of the wreck is, of course, a closely guarded secret, they have declared a protected archaeological zone in the area, which means that no one else can go down looking for it. And they've also said that the first non-intrusive phase of the excavations has begun. 
So that probably means some kind of geophysics like magnetometry. And I hate to disappoint you, but that probably means it'll be quite some time, years at least, before they start pulling up any of the treasure. But hey, you gotta start somewhere. So it begins. Hey, if you like what you heard, give me that thumbs up below, hit that bell to subscribe, or if you want to support more independent archaeology content, consider contributing to my Patreon, where you can enjoy some exclusive members-only benefits and other goodies. Until the next dig.